What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out the odd case of Baron Corbin by none other than Wrestling's premiere. Um, it's funny that this video was requested and sent in to me. Uh, if you guys haven't seen um, my uh, me talking about what happened on Monday, this past Monday Night Raw with Sami Zayn and Cody Rhodes epic promo segment and how they pretty much disregarded baron corbin before he was about to explain how he's feeling about jbl pretty much leaving him high and dry they literally cut his segment to talk about uh you know Sami Zayn's. uh you know well they cut his segment to show Sami Zayn getting into the ring and then they went back to you know for him to talk about how he's feeling only for him to disrespect Cody and his family and then to receive the beats by Cody Rhodes in his suit, bro. <laughs> like, so it's funny we're, we're going to check this video out considering I don't know what you do with Corbin, bro. Like, it, it's it's like he's been repackaged so many times within the past year and nothing has really stuck with him. So we're going to check this video out. Appreciate all love and support, man. Let's get right into this one. Should be a good one. His career has been through a tailspin of epic proportions. The guy is, in my opinion, talented. He's not main event level, but he could be around doing something. It's just the decision making ruins everything about him and makes him forgettable. On paper, Baron Corbin shouldn't really have a hard time in WWE. He's over six foot five, and his imposing height easily stands out, especially in this era of WWE. Not to mention that he could talk and work matches. In addition, he has a sick move set and initially a sick theme song. There had been a couple of times I thought WWE would pull the trigger on him because of how hard they pushed him, but there was always a hesitancy, and then this is after they go through with a big decision, such as Money in the Bank or the Kurt Angle match at WrestleMania. Corbin yeah. has always shined at the wrongest times, and in some ways it's hurt him, but to tell the story, that we gotta go all the way back. Baron Corbin's size and stature wasn't mutually exclusive to professional wrestling. He had made a living as a boxer and was actually legit. In addition, he was a football player, an offensive uh -huh. lineman in particular, and he started for Northwest Missouri State. Corbin's success brought him to the NFL as an undrafted free agent. He was signed to the future 2009 AFC champions, the Indianapolis Colts, he met Pat McAfee and became a friend of his. On the field, Corbin didn't do much and went to the Arizona Cardinals. His time in Arizona was under a futures contract, and unfortunately for him, he didn't stay long and was released in September of 2011. This allowed him to finally put his attention on a lifelong dream professional wrestling. Corbin's agent connected him to the world of WWE and this was very convenient because WWE had just launched NXT. They signed him in August of 2012 to a developmental deal and Corbin had himself convinced that he would shine and be on TV within a year. But he was in for a rude awakening. Mm. For one, Corbin had to tone down his weight. And another thing to mention is that despite being in the NFL, WWE is a whole different game. You need endurance and a high level of commitment because it's one thing to have the technical ability and it's another talking to a random crowd in Corpus Christi and the next day in Stuttgart or Bluke. Similar to Angelo yeah. Dawkins, Corbin had to start from the bottom up as a jobber. He finally figured out his mysterious character by September of 2014 and was called the Lone Wolf. He destroyed his opponents with ease. 10 seconds, less than a minute, whatever. The whole question surrounding Baron Corbin at this point was how long would it take to beat his opponent? He would make quick work and his entrance took longer than his matches for the most part. His stock was increasing over the next few months. He was destroying the likes of both Dempsey, Rhino, and even had a tag team with the ladder in pursuit of the Dusty Rhodes Cup. There came mm -hmm. a lot of good matches out of this and in addition, you got to see Corbin and his drive on breaking ground as well. He was very determined and confident and would step on anybody to get what he wanted. His character in general was simple, but had a lot hidden he didn't disclose information that he didn't need to corbin was simply a sl i liked his long wolf gimmick bro i i liked it i did when i first seen him i was like i like this guy and then when i fucking seen his signature and his fucking finish i was like yo i love it that i'm sorry baron corbin even though we make jokes he has one of the best signatures and he has definitely one of the best finishers. His signature could be a finisher too. But his finisher in the days, oh my god. That move, one, it was one of the most protected moves we've seen in WWE in a very long time. It only recently got broken by Drew McIntyre at last year's WrestleMania. That was, bro, that move is just so good, bro. It's just boom, boom. When he hits it, it's over. It, it's such a beautiful move. It's such a, he has a nice move set. I, I rocks with it, man. I, you know, I, I really had high hopes for him when he they got to the main roster, in my opinion. 
sleazy, douchey guy, but not to an excessive point. He was ready and primed for a successful future on the main roster. He came in and won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal on his debut. WrestleMania 32, the lights are on bright, and he had a nice moment, which I almost forgot about until making this video. He had the 2010s debuting wrestler starter pack feuding with Dolph Ziggler, and me telling you about this feud is not as much value. Ah, <laughs> not the debuting wrestler starting pack feuding with Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> It's funny because it's true. When you debut on the main roster, who you going to face? Most likely going to face fucking Dolph Ziggler. That's your starting pack feud. Watching Heroes of Wrestling don't get much value out of it. It introduced Baron Corbin to a wider audience, and from there, he continued being mysterious. It was, as I said, a dark mysterious, but just plain mysterious. Mm -hmm. Lone Wolf was drafted to SmackDown as part of the draft and started stalking Kalisto. This is when I'd say he shined brightest, at least up to this point. He bullied him on multiple occasions yep. after he cost him an intercontinental title shot, and Kalisto being the small guy that he was allowed for Corbin's moves to look menacing and dangerous. Oh, they love were a good it. fit for each other. That chairs match is literally one of the only good chairs matches that have ever happened. Mm -hmm. They had a way wrestling so quick and smooth there was just something good about those two when they were paired together following this corbin set his sights on the intercontinental championship it was a short program with dean ambrose which unfortunately didn't make its way to the wrestlemania card it was instead on the pre-show which which i personally feel was bizarre because dean ambrose had just been wwe champion seven months ago him on the wrestlemania pre-show just does not sound right corbin Doesn't was coasted sense. along though he was always featured and then from out of nowhere he won money in the bank this kind of caught me off guard if I remember correctly because AJ, KO, and Shinsuke were making noise. Even Sami Zayn. But it's the lone wolf, and this was the biggest problem. Not the fact that he won it, but the lack of commitment. They just chose Corbin because I don't remember my personal thoughts on what would happen here. I pers I do believe he ended up getting some backstage heat, and that's how he ended up losing it. So I think that's what it was, ultimately. Because I didn't have a problem with him winning it. You know, if you're going to do, you got to commit. You're trying to build up a new star. And maybe, just maybe if he didn't have that backstage heat, and maybe he was to actually cash in successfully, maybe we'd, we'd be singing a different tune. Who knows? person didn't think, oh, he's going to cash in, oh, he's going to fail. I just, I don't remember. But I certainly do remember when he tried to cash in on the August 15th, 2017 episode of SmackDown. You see, the champion was Jinder Mahal. He was knocked down. John Cena's on the apron. Corbin knocks him down. And Jinder goes to the roll up to retain the title. The lone wolf looked like the lone idiot in this situation. I'm going to be honest with you. They should have. That would have been a cool audible. Because Jinder wasn't it. He just wasn't it. I get why they had him as champion. They were trying to appeal to a broader audience. They were doing some tours. But he wasn't it. I would have been okay. And I think a lot of us. Would have been okay if Baron Corbin would have won. I would have been okay with it. I would have not had no issue with it. I would have been all right, just something different. Situation. He lost the cash in to a roll up, not to mention to one of in storyline the weakest world champions in recent memory. Bro lost the plot like the 2017 Falcons. He was falling harder than 2017 Arsenal. This guy, it wasn't going well for him at this point. And later that week, he lost to John Cena in under 10 minutes. Yep. How do you go from a potential world champion, and the champion was Jinder Mahal, so Corbin's chances were big? You know, if Jinder could do it, he could as well. To mentally, metaphorically speaking, broke. What? I would not pray for this type of downfall on my worst enemy. It just, it was so bad. Yeah. He's Spoke about when he found out about the cash in on the All Things Wrestling podcast back in 2018. It was kind of like an hour before SmackDown Live, said Corbin. We discussed and then they made a decision that was going to be the night. It didn't work out, but yeah, it was definitely about an hour before. I mean, it's the fun part of this business. You never know what your day is going to hold. Some things could be very, very last minute. It could be at that very last second. So it's pretty wild and it keeps you on your toes. That's for sure. When you read about this, it's kind of sad because the long term plan was like the list of titles Jake Roberts won in WWF. There was nothing there. And it all Shit's depended on what they felt really that day. I'm like, huh, that Corbin kid is cool. We could do a story like this and this. And before he knows it, he's facing John Cena at SummerSlam for the title. Whatever they were thinking that day, the reasons for the sudden failed cash-in apparently had to do with a meeting, which was revealed by Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer in September of 2017. So the story goes, Corbin argued with a doctor over concussions. And this doctor was an NFL doctor. He was talking about wrestlers as hell, this and that. When the topic of concussions came up. He had a little argument with him, and it's not built up as something that was loud or anything like that. It was just awkward. It was flat out awkward, and this left the locker room amazed with Corbin and the fact that he spoke back to a doctor about concussions correcting him. It was great for that, but it wasn't so good for him in general because this was amongst the reasons why he lost money in the bank 
in August of 2017. In addition, Corbin had blocked some wrestlers on Twitter and had some eyes on him at the worst time. He was brave enough to talk about concussions since he's a wrestler and a former NFL player, and it's reasonable, but reasonable gets you the money in the bank taken away from you. Corbin's push at this point. So pretty much, like I said, backstage heat. He got backstage heat, and then that was it. That was it. Even if that is the story to be told, I do remember it was just backstage heat he got, and that's why they took it away, which kind of sucks because when you think about it, it's like, you should be talking about concussions, but they, that's probably a big no-no, especially with Vince. Don't bring that shit up at all. So I get it, but you shouldn't fucking bury the guy for it either. Faded, well, main event push, I should note. Faded faster than The Rock's hairline in 2001. So now he had to deal with the consequences, that being the United States champion. It's not all bad, right? He had a strong spot on the card and was feuding with everyone. Of course, it didn't last long, and before he knew it, he was on Raw. His role on the show was much more prominent as he was made the constable and watched Kurt Angle, who made an enemy out of Stephanie McMahon. He changed his look to a look like he works at Applebee's, cut his hair, and had more screen time than just about anybody on the show. Constable Corbin is probably the most hated character of his. The show that was already shit. bad, but then you had him and the likes of Drew McIntyre. That shit was so... That's when his stock started to plummet. Because it wasn't even like good heel character work. It was like, get this shit off my screen character work. Like what JBL told him a couple weeks ago, it was, all right, I'm turning the channel. Is turning the channel inducing heat. You don't want that. You want, oh, I'm so mad. I can't wait to see them get beat. Not, oh, you know what? He's boring. Click. And that's what they started to do. Standing tall at the end of Raw. It was depressing. I didn't even watch Raw at the time much because there's not much value in watching Raw. And it's still sad to look at. The problem with Constable came down to overexposure. I saw him more than I saw the moon. I saw him more than just about anybody. Constable was all over the place. And no matter who you are, it's never a good thing to be overexposed like that. The worst part about all this was when WWE literally blamed him for the ratings despite following his work. You know, he's a guy. He's doing his work. You're asking him to do what you want him to do. Yet, this is how they pay back the favor. This is, of course, <laughs> I'm going to blame you for ratings, bro. When they give you a shitty gimmick, <laughs> what you to do? Some storyline, but it was ridiculous. He had this long-term feud with Kurt Angle, who I distinctively remember. You know, the everyone wanted Kurt Angle's final match to be against John Cena at WrestleMania 35. It works as a full circle moment. And I remember that match yeah. even like it was 20 minutes when it was actually 10 minutes. It was a very forgettable match and unfortunate ending for Kurt Angle. At face value, was like, oh, they're gonna make a straw out of Corbin, but then you look at where he was a couple of months later, and it was a waste. It was there was a, waste a Seth Rollins feud huh? nobody wants to talk about. Something even worse than Constable Corbin was on the way. King Corbin. After winning yep. King of the Ring, Baron Corbin changed his entire gimmick to a king. And usually when somebody becomes a king, it doesn't work out so well. That's what happened. A feud that dragged on and on and on and on with Roman Reigns. There was dog food, and it was a mess. It was a feud which benefited nobody. At time and it's crazy. He's still the last person to have beaten Roman Reigns. <laughs> Baron Corbin is the last person to have ever beaten Roman Reigns. In the past few years, 2019, that's the last time Roman Reigns lost a match in a pin. In a, that's the last time he's been pinned by fucking Baron Corbin. Make it make sense. It's like they wanted Baron Corbin to fail when you look at these feuds. Because this feud went on too long. The content itself wasn't that good. And the positive nope. would be the matches, which would then turn into a negative because of the constant rematches. Yep. The character in itself went so damn far. Nearly two years, but it was finally coming to an end. And it would bring a storyline, which many are still clamoring for to this day. Broke Corbin. After losing his king <laughs> status to Shinsuke Nakamura, Corbin lost his status in general possessions. And this was affecting every facet of his life. I love this storyline because it was fresh. Corbin had been this arrogant, zero worries guy for years, and he finally comes through some hardship. Add to that, you could see how hard he was trying to make the storyline work. Man was humbled beyond belief and wore the same shirt for weeks, even again begging the fans for money. That's how bad it was. Mary Corbin was possibly heading towards a face turn, and everyone that was coming up to him made fun of him for Carmen. Years of causing chaos on the roster and belittling others had finally caught up to him. The story had a lot of potential, but then Corbin wins the lottery in Vegas. The city of misery for many was the city of pleasure and success for him. His luck had finally turned around and after two months of being broke, Corbin was back. Even called himself Happy Corbin. I actually believe... <laughs> I just want y'all to understand. That's the real thing. This nigga was a bum wearing the same shirt for fucking months to hit the lottery. Now he's Happy Corbin. He's rich. Whoopee. 
him he would quickly grow broke and not learn a lesson but that was the whole point of the story it was all oh, corbin he didn't change one bit he was just simply broke he was humbled and taught himself absolutely nothing and he went back to being the exact same person he was the character according to corbin was so close to turning him baby face as in his eyes if it had continued there would have been no way he could have been a heel again and wwe needed him in that role happy corbin was a downgrade of course from broke corbin he brought in madcap moss feuded with drew McIntyre before feuding with his own guy this led to the pat mcafee storyline and that was the end of happy corbin he had been demoralized by McAfee. He was constantly calling him bum ass. <laughs> he was losing a lot. And I guess WWE thought it was time for a change. Enter JBL. Baron Corbin for several years had shared similarities with John Bradshaw Layfield. Some even consider him the modern day JBL, and I can see why. According to Corbin, being paired with JBL was all about bringing that edge back. Unfortunately, it did not go the way they expected it, it didn't to be. Work. JBL comes out dressed like a 2003 with the oversized suit, <laughs> shows why he's one of the best promos on the roster despite not wrestling, and Corbin Price. does his business. I felt like the shine was mostly on JBL despite being. <laughs> The manager he trashes <laughs> and that's the whole point his shine was falling the manager it wasn't on baron corbin no one gave a damn about baron corbin in his new fit all we cared about is jbl and the oversized suits and the hilarious commentary on on the commentary booth and him running the uh the backstage gambling ring like that's all we cared about we didn't care about fucking corbin the crowd and then makes mention of Corbin and until last week it wasn't going well. It got to the point where JBL sees this partnership and who knows where Corbin goes from here on. One thing for sure is that Corbin had more gimmick changes than Charlie has. He needs that one character and they still haven't found it yet. The Lone Wolf was of course a good thing for him it fit him but I don't see him going back to it at this point. Fans have seen that before maybe if they slightly change it a bit who knows but what's important to mention is that whatever follows could help his career a lot. Maybe broke Corbin? I was wanting them to bring back this character because of the effort and commitment Corbin had to it, and I know it's not supposed to last, it's not, but it could lead to an entirely different thing for him. The man has never been a babyface before, so people say, oh, he's a natural heel, which he probably is, but we'll never know what could be from this yeah. babyface turn if they don't try. And now's a better time to try than ever. I hope he doesn't have that 2014 Electronic 22 Jump Street type music at this time, but the theme song with JBL didn't match, his look took a downgrade, he was wearing suits as Happy Corbin, and with JBL, he didn't do that, which I found odd. Especially his in-ring look, it was bad. The effort wasn't there to making it work. So yeah. Alright, what do you guys think of Baron Corbin? Please comment down below, and that's the first... Yeah, man. This was a great video uh, by none other than... Uh... Uh, wrestling premiere gonna give it a like y'all go subscribe to him link to the original video will be down below uh me personally i like his idea i think going back to the lone wolf probably won't work as much unless you change it up a bit but maybe him being a face could be something interesting because we don't we've never really seen him as a face it had to be somebody that's an overwhelming heel maybe they gotta do something because what they've been doing has not worked. It's not. No one cares about Baron Corbin. Maybe making him a face could help. I don't know. Comment down below. Let me know. What do you guys think would help Baron Corbin get over in the fans' eyes? Let me know down below. Do you think he should be a face? Do you think he should go back to the lone wolf gimmick? Do you think he should come up with something else? Let me know. I want to get your guys' thoughts and opinions on that. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K, and I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.